Gucci. Is it raining? Did it just start raining in the middle of this hot ass day? It is raining. Oh my God, Texas, what are you doing? Why is it raining? What's up guys, Max Max Works here and today we are doing a ride and review of this beautiful 2016 Ducati Hyperstrata. Now uh, the Hyperstrata is basically a super motard that's set up for touring, which if that sounds weird to you, it is. There's not really any bikes that cross over with this and it's kind of a weird um, category because you have one part dirt bike, one part touring bike, one part hooligan machine, and it and it kind of is <laughs> is a bizarre Ducati specific um, homogamation. But a lot of people really love these bikes, and having put a few miles on it, I can really understand why. So uh, this bike, I don't have them on right now, but it's equipped with factory side bags. It's got an aftermarket uh, top box, and I'm riding on uh, the Hyperstrata SP, which was the, the more performance-oriented uh, Super Motard uh, seat, mostly because it's a little lower and a little more scalloped and a little more comfortable. Um, but so let's talk, let's talk numbers. So 2016 was the first year of the 939. So they took the old 821 and basically punched it out. And from what I understand, it wasn't really a performance concern as much as it was a uh, European emissions concern. They basically couldn't meet the emission standards with the old motor uh, and still make the right amount of power. So they basically punched it out, put a little more bore into it, and uh, that kind of put them right with the European emissions requirements. Um, this bike makes, I believe, like right around 110 horsepower and 75 pound-feet of torque. Uh, from a tech side, it's got very kind of long travel-y suspension. I think it's like six inches of travel in the front and rear. And it's definitely, you feel it, it's like a dirt bike where as soon as you sit on it, it sags down like an inch and a half. But when you first walk up to it and you gotta throw a leg over it, it's, it's really tall. And this is the quote-unquote lower model based on the VIN. So they had one that was even taller than this, I think, um, with like a slightly different suspension uh, setup. But I can tell you, I have a 32 inch inseam. The bike is very comfortable to sit on, is very comfortable to ride, but my foot gets, uh, clips the seat coming on and off. It's a little tall for me um, to comfortably swing my leg over, over it. Um, it's definitely something you have to get used to it's not really a big deal, but the, the softness and the initial preload of suspension makes it so when you get off the bike, as soon as you take your weight off, the bike jumps up like half an inch or an inch. Um, speaking of, while we are on the topic of ergonomics, uh, the ergonomics on this bike are kind of weird. It's like, it's got what used to be a Ducati race engine in it, and sort of supermoto suspension, but like, um, for those of you who remember, like there was a KTM SM690, right? Which was kind of a dirt bike factory supermoto that wasn't really a dirt bike. It was actually like a full size, you know, bike frame. Um, this is kind of like that, where this feels like a proper motorcycle. It doesn't feel like a dirt bike but it's supposed to sort of reflect a dirt bike or, or be kind of that supermoto vibe. Um, but it, as a result of that, you sit kind of like you sit on a dirt bike where you're kind of forward on your ball sack, but it's not uncomfortable if that makes any sense. Um, and uh, you know, you're, you're very forward, you're very upright. Um, I have plenty of space for my feet. I actually really like the, the rider triangle on this. It feels a little weird at first and looks a little weird at first, but honestly, 
once you're up on it and uh, riding around, it feels pretty natural. Um, this bike is completely stock other than a Puig um, aftermarket windscreen and like I said that that hard box on top um, which isn't on right now. Uh, this like I said the seat is a factory Ducati seat is just not from this bike. Um, but like I said the ergonomics are, are, are really pretty good. I feel very comfortable and I will say you know, here in East Austin, we don't have the bestest of roads, especially when there's construction. Like, you see all this garbage here? That right there, I gotta lift myself up on my speed triple. On this bike, she just takes it. Um, I would say it's very comfortable to ride, which is actually why it sort of makes sense as a sports tour. Like, it's not a go across the country type sports tour. It's a run the tail of the dragon and maybe camp out kind of sport tour. As far as the engine is concerned, you have your standard L-shaped Ducati uh, twin. Um, it's water-cooled, uh, and it makes really good power and torque. I will say that, um, I'll talk about the, the ride modes later, but I will say that it feels a little jerky down low. Um, I think that's just because this motor was never meant to be a torque like low down torque monster this was originally like back in the i think back in the 90s was uh was a ducati race bike engine like a sport bike engine and they've just basically adapted it and modified it over the years uh, to fit a number of different applications but it really um it really likes uh moving at speed and so with that let me segue into the uh performance electronics on this bike because there are a lot so <clears throat> the bike comes with three official riding modes. They're called Urban, Touring, and Sport. Uh, the names are a little misleading, and uh, they basically correlate to three things. Engine power delivery, uh, ABS setting, and uh, DTC setting. So DTC is Ducati Traction Control. It's got a setting from zero to eight, I believe where eight is fully intrusive and zero is good luck. Um, and then on top of that, you've got two ABS, or three ABS modes, zero, one, and two. Um, two is obviously the most intrusive, uh, zero is good luck. So the touring mode, the, from the factory, the touring mode has a DCC value of four and an ABS value of two. Touring mode is, is what I would call normal. That's where like you wanna ride around in the city most of the time, highway, whatever, there's enough protection that you're probably not going to hurt yourself badly, but there's also enough slip and you've got, uh, it's officially sits in medium power, but you actually get all of the power, just the power delivery is a little more subdued. Um, you don't get quite the same insane throttle response as you do in sport. Um, and so touring is kind of what, what the normal on this bike is. That's where you, you know, want to be nine times out of 10. Then there's urban mode. Urban mode is really rain mode. Um, basically it turns your uh, DTC all the way up, ABS all the way up, and it reduces your power by 75%, or to 75%. So you've got about 75 horsepower. Um, ah, that sucks. Go away, stupid plastic. Ah, come on. That's super lame. Not about that life. Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah. So urban is really like rain mode. And then you have sport mode, which is uh, one ABS, I think two traction control, and uh, it gives you maximum throttle response, which is cool. Um, but in my opinion, that riding mode is very, very twitchy. Is it raining? Did it just start raining in the middle of this hot ass day? It is raining. Oh my God, Texas, what are you doing? Why is it raining? So I've tried all three, I keep it in touring. All three modes are actually adjustable. And so if you don't like, you know, if you want sport, but you want, you know, a little more traction control, you can choose that in the menu um, and change that. So in Texas, this is where you have to be very careful. When there's like not been rain for a while and then all of a sudden there's a little bit of rain, 
all of the oil on these asphalt roads just rises to the top and then you're just like you got to be real careful because it can get real slick anyway so those are your three touring modes and uh we're out of gasoline so let's stop and get some gasoline definitely not filtering definitely gonna edit this part out of the video definitely not illegal in texas so since it's rained let's put this thing in urban mode and see what it feels like i haven't really tried this yet I mean, so right now we're riding with about 75% of the engine's power, I guess, available. But since we're on city streets where it's 30 mile an hour speed limit and traffic and children and stuff, it's not really much of a concern. Um, but now we got a full tank of dino juice and uh, the bike should be pretty happy. I even put premium in it because, you know, Ducati. I actually don't know if this bike takes premium or not, but it's not going to hurt anything. Um, and I will say that it only took about two, almost just under three gallons, which if you saw my other video on replacing the gas tank, you know the gas tank is this massively long thing, but I guess it doesn't actually hold that much volume. Um, but yeah, so we've talked about ergonomics. I think the bike is very comfortable. It's kind of a recap. Um, it's very dirt bikey, but it's pretty comfortable. Um, the suspension is great. Uh, I don't know if it's just because this bike is new and has less than 5,000 miles and the technology is pretty new, but I will say riding on this thing is a, is a little cloud, man. Like I had that Harley bagger, you know, a month ago and I'd be real hard pressed to say that this was less comfortable. Um, at least to me. We talked about the motor. Motor makes good power. I am a fan of this power plant. Um, the handling is pretty sharp. You have a very vertical... Woo! I mean, that's 75% running up against full throttle. Which is pretty good pretty good um, and it's cool because you can change these uh, riding modes kind of on the fly so now we'll go into sport mode I don't, I'm not holding the brake okay so now we're in sport mode oh yeah I mean I'm probably not actually a good enough rider to understand the differences, but we're just going to try to not get arrested here. Definitely not doing anything illegal, officer. I'm pretty sure we're pretty close to the speed limit here. Whew! Got away with that one. Um, yeah, this bike is, is a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Um, what else we got? Oh, brakes. Uh, the front brakes are really good. They're a little touchy, in my opinion, but that may just be the softer suspension where as soon as you grab any front brake, it feels like there's a little bit of front dive. Um, that just might be the price you pay for riding on a cloud. But it's it's really a, a, a very well-balanced, put-together bike. The rear brake works really well, too. Um, you know, I, again, I don't know that I'd ever treat this thing as a dirt bike. Like I couldn't see myself like running trails and stuff with it. Um, it's just too expensive and too wide and too easy to break. Uh, but I think as a as a commuter bike or a sport touring bike, this is very very reasonable. As long as your sport touring commute isn't isn't super long. Like I said, could you ride this bike across the country? Absolutely, I'm sure that you could. Uh, there's just I feel like better options. They're all gonna be bigger. They're all gonna be heavier, but um, You know if you're looking for a baby sport tour, this isn't bad. The only downside is This bike is expensive um, You know this bike 
uh, I think new is something like 14 grand in the US and then if you uh, and then if you uh, you know buy it used this one obviously has some some body damage but uh, you know I am still planning on on asking for like 8500 I've seen good 939s there's, there's a premium for the 939 the 2016 and later motor um, definitely commands a premium but uh, you know, actually, let's just go this way. Okay with this. Um, definitely commands a premium. But, uh, I would say, you know, I've never ridden the A21. I don't know how much of a difference it really makes between the two bikes. But, uh, you know, a good one of these, a 2016 and later, is going to set you back nine grand, like a real clean one. Um, somewhere between eight and nine grand and I'm gonna try to get somewhere between seven and eight grand for this bike uh, in the condition that it's in um, it's real stock I like the exhaust um, it's just real quiet the the bike is despite being you know Ducati red and like very aggressive looking I feel like this bike doesn't really draw a lot of attention um, you know we pulled up next to those guys in the gas station and like even my speed triple, which is, you know, coming up on, wait, no, it is. It's 20 years old. My speed triple is 20 years old. It gets looks and attention and, and people always got something to say about it. Like, and that's just a black bike with a, with an aftermarket exhaust on it. This thing is Ducati red. And so far as I've been riding it around, it doesn't even get like a second look, which is kind of weird. But I think it's because it's, it's so quiet. I think if you put a race pipe or like one of those Termigani systems or whatever on here, I think a lot of people would uh, pay a lot more attention. But, I mean, whew, that, that sport mode, it, it really comes on the power hard. And uh, I like it that much. I kind of, I kind of like, uh, I kind of like touring mode. I think that's really where, where I'm happiest. And that's probably more to do with my skill as a rider as opposed to anything to do with the Ducati. So let's do a quick rundown here. Um, we've talked about price, we've talked about suspension, we've talked about engine, we've talked about comfort. Uh, we let's let's revisit revisit market position, right? So <clears throat> the Hyper Motard is this bike without bags, basically. Uh, slightly different seat, a few cosmetic differences. Nothing to really talk about. So the hi there's no real difference between the Hyper Motard and the Hyper Strada other than application. So we're just gonna loop them together. Years ago, KTM made the SM690. That was kind of a very big boy um, dirt bike supermoto, I guess. Like, they didn't even come with uh, dirt tires, I don't think. They came with like a supermoto setup and it was, you know, a, a big single, I believe it was a big single, and it made, you know, good power, like north of 70 horsepower. And so it, it like really was, uh, was, a, was a bad boy, very bad boy. On the other end of that, you have things like the KTM Super Duke, which I wouldn't consider as a competitor to this because that is a full throttle, like nutso bike. Um, it's going to be heavier, it's going to be bigger, it's going to be way more aggressive and, and uh, angry. You know, this thing is, I guess, technically in the leader bike category as a 939, but 100 horsepower or 110 horsepower, to me, is more of a middleweight category. Um, and, and there's nothing really that competes with this. So, I would say that, you know, if you're looking for kind of a fun, hooligan-y kind of bike, you know, you're, you're not going to cross shop a speed triple with this, I don't think, um, or any of the sport bike based variants. And honestly, there's not really anything dirt bike, in my opinion, that compares with this right now either. Like, sure, you can get a dirt bike and turn it into a supermoto, but it's not going to be anywhere near as smooth or as comfortable. It's going to require way more maintenance. It's going to be just a, a way bigger pain in the ass um, than this thing. You know, and because it's got the benefit of a Ducati race motor and a race transmission, it's just, it's very smooth, it's very clean. Um, it's a fantastic bike. 
So let's, <laughs> let me let me stop for a minute. Let's talk about some downsides. Um, in my opinion, there's a lot of vibration through the handlebars. My hands are starting to get a little numb. Um, I would perhaps like to see some some bar ends. So this bike is supposed to have like uh, bark buster turn signal things. Um, they were broken on this bike, so they're not on here now. But they're just light plastic. They wouldn't make a significant uh, reduction in, in uh, vibration, I don't think. I think the gauge cluster is is nice. There's a lot of information there. Um, like, you've got mileage, you've got gear ratio, you've got speed, you've got water temperature, you've got your DTC and, and, and uh, ABS numbers. Like, you can click through this. We've got air temperature, we've got time. There's a, there's a lot of settings in here, and um, I would I would like to, and there's a lot of lights, you know, turn signals, neutral light, all the regular stuff, but there's also an ABS and an engine warning light and a gas light and a high beam light, and uh, I feel like it's as good as it can be for being that small, but I feel like if that gauge cluster was maybe 20% bigger, uh, it would be a lot nicer. Um, I have the SP seat. I've also ridden on the factory seat. Um, they both work for this kind of bike, but if I was doing some long-term touring, like, like real mileage, I would definitely want to look into a Corbin or, or whoever Ducati uses as their like nice, comfortable aftermarket seat people. Um, you know, it's not bad, but it's a little, it's a little sporty. It's a little aggressive. Um, the bike also seems, the, the way the exhaust is routed, it throws a lot of heat at your right ankle. Um, that's true on a lot of bikes. Uh, it's not Ducati specific, it, but it is something to, to be aware of uh, if you're part of the flip-flop crowd. Um, this is not a great flip-flop riding motorcycle. But, you know, it's smooth, it's comfortable. Um, I don't know about two upriding. Uh, you could definitely put somebody on the back of this bike. There's plenty of space back there. Um, but you'd need to make a suspension adjustment, I think, uh, for anybody more than 60 pounds. But, you know, it, I like the softness. I mean, I don't know that I'd like this bike on a racetrack or anything like that, but riding around town, especially with the shitty roads we have here in Austin, this thing absorbs bumps very, very well. I am very very happy with uh, with the performance of that okay let's do we're on our way home let's do some final conclusions here uh, final conclusion one this bike is better than I thought it was uh, when I initially got it I thought cool just like just like the Harley Ducatis have great name recognition they sell real well um, you know it was gonna be easy money I, but now having put some put some seat time on it I I find myself uh, appreciating this bike a little more than I did. I was definitely a little, uh, a little shitty on the bike, and um, you know, I, I appreciate it a little bit more. It's got great power. It pulls in sixth gear at 50 miles an hour. I could easily pass somebody. Um, it's very comfortable. It has slightly weird ergonomics in some ways, but uh, you know, it's not, not the end of the world. And a lot of those ergonomics uh, could be could be uh, finessed and adjusted. They're not hard coded in to the bike's DNA. Um, the fact that it's got ABS and traction modes and all kinds of cool stuff is great. I'm not going to test it out here on the street, but you know, I, I'm sure it works real well. There's a butterfly landing on the front of my helmet. Um, all in all. I like this bike. I don't know that I like this bike at two, like, like I don't know if I like this bike at, at $8,500, $9,000. I would like this bike at $6,000, I think. Um, like this model specifically, you know, in the six to 6,500 range, I would say this is very good value for money. Um, up around nine grand, you're paying a significant premium for the Ducati name and look. That being said, like we talked about earlier, 
if you want a sport touring supermoto, there's not really a whole lot of those. Um, and so I don't really know what I would point you to. Um, you know, I, I would really love to ride this back to back with something like a FZ09. Um, I feel like that is the closest competitor to something like this. Obviously the FZ isn't based on a dirt bike, but a used one of those could be had in the $6,000 range. And I really wonder if this is $3,000 better or $2,500 better. Um, but I will say the, the longer travel suspension is nice. It is very plush, very comfortable. Um, you know, it's, it's reasonable. It's a little, like I said, it's a little bit of a leg cooker, but it's definitely not the worst ever. So I think that's my review. I think this is a very good bike. I don't think it's a very good value bike, but I think that if you're in the market and the sort of person that's like, I want a Ducati and you can afford to have a Ducati and maintain a Ducati, I think it's reasonable. I think this, there, there are no obvious technical shortfalls to this bike that I can find. Um, I don't like that rev limiter. I think the gauge cluster could be a little better. Um, and I would love to see a little bit of vibration reduction in the handles. But those are all things, well, except for the gauge cluster, that are very easily addressable. So if you like the video, hit the like button. If you like the channel, please subscribe. If you want to see how I fix this bike, check out my fix it video. It'll be linked at the end of this video. As always, I'm Max. This is Max Hurts. I love you guys. Peace.